All right, everybody. We're gonna try this again. See everybody. What I got here is a little advertisement for my store called ShopSketchCraft.com. Now, the reason why I had to restart the video is because I was backing up files to my online storage to keep all my artwork safe. And what pays for that online storage? When people buy things from ShopSketchCraft.com. Now, if you can't buy anything from ShopSketchCraft.com, then all you gotta do is like. Leave a comment, share the videos. That's how you help out. Then YouTube gives me some money. And I get to get some coffee. While I upload videos paid for by people who support the videos and buy things from shopsketchcraft.com. All right, let's get on with the show. nifty effect. Hmm. So let me go to my cam and make certain that what we have here is accurate. Yeah, that's, that looks pretty good. All right. There we go. Will you be on later tonight? Uh, no. I, well, maybe when I'm working on Mega Visions, so it's possible. But I gotta work super. It's super late. So my schedule right now, folks, is a little different. Um, I'm gonna be starting three hours a day during the day. Uh, to be working on the commissions and the dark siders during the day. So I'm gonna be rotating. Right now, it's going to be closer to two hours. Um, I'm getting closer. And then I have to put in five or six hours of effort at night on freelance. And then I got another two hours on Mega Visions. And then I do some writing plus dinner and everything else. So uh, I will only be streaming during the day. Probably about an hour earlier from now, normally. So that's where we're getting to. So um, And then Fridays, I won't be doing anything unless something comes up because I need right now I need Fridays to help out with some family stuff that's going on yeah. that's how it works that's how it works but that's still me working 10 hours a day so it doesn't really stop anything uh all right One second. 
There we go. You have to start school tomorrow. Oh, yeah. reference. I think so. Yeah, well, Knuckles is a tough guy, man. Am I gonna get that? No, not probably. I don't collect a lot of art books anymore, man. Like, I to, I'm actually extremely careful about the kind of books I buy because I just can't keep storing giant hardbound books. So, um, so either if it's something from a childhood that I really dig, I love the Sonic Mania art, just. I don't want to be storing a ton of books. I got art supplies and computer equipment around here that just eats up too much of my space as it is. I will be buying Sonic Mania Plus though, the physical copy, because I have the digital version on my Switch. So. I'd say it's my second favorite Sonic game of all time. What do I think of the new Invader Zim Ah, uh, I thought it was awesome. Can't wait. I love the Zim comic. 
I love the original show. I got the Zim DVD uh, house case. I just got the house. Came with a little Gurr figure. <clears throat> and I've been reading Joan and stuff since Johnny the Homicidal Maniac. So. I'm a fan. Uh, it's awesome. I'm going to rewatch it. When I did that Rick and Morty piece, I hit a Zerk and Insignia on. Rick's gun. Uh, there actually is news on Nintendo. A letter for that Reggie had sent out to some gaming press had leaked, confirming the existence of some newer games that they're going to show off soon. That they're going to show off Mario Kart Tour for the mobile, apparently in September. And then... With that, some new footage of a, a new Mario Kart game for the Switch. As well as that they're working on new Donkey Kong for the Switch as well. Not ports. What do I like best about Sonic? Uh, you know, man, when the levels really, really work, this combination of, like, platforming with, with like, the the speed tube things like really I don't know there's something about it that works the music has always been a big ish, big deal with Sonic like the guy just always liked uh, had a little bit of that Mega Man vibe with you know robots and animals turning into robots and what I really about Sonic Mania is that it just throws a lot of different like puzzle ideas at you you know randomly in the middle of levels it makes every boss fight completely different yeah I think with Nintendo right now they just don't feel like talking about stuff until it's ready to come out you know so and Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey were both in development for years. So, you know, I mean, 
And I know they've been working on that Star Fox game for a while, but who knows? He said there's going to be a port of Star Fox Zero on the Switch. You know, which I can only assume will get rid of the shitty play control mechanics, so... But I know there's an original Star Fox game that's being made that's more like Diddy Kong Racing, but I don't... They haven't talked about it, so who knows? Am I going to make his hair darker? I'm going to add shadows. So, like, I need a fist to drop shadow on this, and then i got to add a black line, and then i got to do some contrast. But you want to be careful that you don't go too dark, bro. You know? So, like, I need... I don't use the darkness to make things darker. I use it to pop shapes out. So... But in order to get the shadows down, I have to work out this hand first. Otherwise, you'll end up making the whole piece super dark. But, I mean, I did the same kind of contrast, you know, on Sonic, you know. So, it's using, when his hand's placed here, it creates this drop shadow from the ear in his hand. So, I can keep these bright spots and then use darker areas to contrast. So, there's going to be some stuff for certain. It's just, I mean, as I did on his face, you know. But, too much dark, and then, trust me, you, when it comes to semi-transparent medium, like watercolor or color pencil, you, you really want to control your darks and use them more as a contrast, a way to pop the brighter parts out versus going right to darks, you know. It's more of like, uh, like difference between using watercolors and say like acrylic or oils where you start dark and then build up highlights. This is a lot different. Uh, for some reason, this makes more sense to me. Of. But you have to like envision it pretty much. You have to really envision how it's going to go, you know, in your head. Well, look, graphically, if I could do it, I would love to see a mode where they look cell shaded, like 2D cell shaded, with like the old Mario Kart commercials. But they'll never do it, but that's... I would like a photographer mode, where I can just explore the maps with the camera, and, like, do a photo mode and stuff. Like, if I could be Lakitu. Because some of those Mario Kart 8 levels are so awesome. It'd be great to just explore them outside of the races, you know? If I had a choice to make a Mario or a Sonic game, what would it be about? Uh, since I was in about the fifth grade, and I played Dragon War, I've always wanted a Mario game where he was actually in a mushroom kingdom, like a real, or not like Mario RPG, but a real, like, where he had mushroom armor, and, you know, you could explore the castles and the kingdoms and the toad people, and so... If it were a Sonic game, um, I would want a game that... There's a demo you can find that someone had made where they built an open world area that's procedural, but it looks just like the Sonic... Uh, it looks like Green Hill Valley Zone, Green Hill Zone. And so it's procedurally based, and I would have like this procedurally based open world where then you have designed levels inside there that you can go into. So you get that great sense of running uh, giant corkscrews. It was a demo that they made on the PC just to show how it worked. 
the play control wasn't perfect, but I mean, damn, dude, it really sold me on, like, that idea can really, I don't know, it was just a demo I downloaded and played, and I really enjoyed it, because you could get these giant open sprawling corkscrews, and But it still had that pixel 16, 32 bit, you know, feel to it. I don't like Sonic with realistic backgrounds. <laughs> So what I'm doing here, folks, is I'm constantly like holding the back part of this pencil. So what I can do is go over the shapes very lightly. And I'm just trying to build up the folds and the general shape of his fist. And the camera captures only so much, but you can really start to see the shapes kind of take form as you go along. Um, but it's a lot of little pieces that, little pieces of color pencil that stay on the page and then build up. They slowly build up. And the trick to speed it up is to just kind of like go around, you know, these like scribbles. Kind of like continually to scribble and kind of build up little layers. And because I'm holding it back here, it's not pressing super hard. So you don't lose the whiteness of the highlights of the page. And if I want it to be a little darker, you just go around the side of the pencil so you get a little bit more. And then at the end, when I'm ready to kind of do more more detail, I, I sharpen the pencil and then hold it closer to the tip. Yeah, I will have prints of these available in the shop, yes. These originals are commission, they've, so they've already been sold. This is how you keep from screwing up your knuckles <laughs> while you work on knuckles. But why you use color pencil? Yeah, it's always, I mostly just play my Switch in handheld mode, so it's fucking awesome when I'm playing, you know, when I'm on the f plane, I play Sonic Mania, and then I'm playing Breath of the Wild, I'm almost like, Mario Kart, I'm like, this is crazy, you know, and it's the full game, it's not some limited console, I mean, a uh, mobile, 
game or nothing. So, and I'm definitely gonna get Diablo on my Switch, bro, when that comes out. Yeah, it's semi opaque, semi -trans transparent. So it's it's opaque if you keep pressing, 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 but it's always got a, a transparency to it. So the way to work with them is very similar to uh, watercolor, where you know you go from light to dark. Which is why you can go over this, I can go over this fist with a light yellow color pencil very lightly and it will glaze it similar to color pencil, it will turn it yellow, you know. Which is why watercolor works well when you do these like light washes. But it's kind of like you have to have the patience, you know. If you're looking for quick immediate results. Especially when you kind of don't know how it works, it, it, it doesn't quite work that way. And you kind of need to know like how the colors are going to affect the colors, the colors that you put on top affect the colors below it. Because they're going to have, they're going to change.
So we all use, let's see. That to can do a cache in. Yeah, you do get to the point where, like, I I don't. This this started around when I was. Nineteen or so, but there there did come to be a point where I don't get any. The, the, how do I say this? Like the joy I used to get from buying something, I, I just buying something or playing a game isn't the same as making something. You know, and it's tough because when I was younger, I was like you know, I, I enjoyed making things, but I just wasn't very good at them. So it's like, how do you stick with it when you can't see? permanent improvement, you know, in a tolerable amount of time, and it's just, I don't know if motivation's quite the word, I think fixation, like, you gotta sort of just, you know, how you can get fixated playing play a game, you gotta kind of like, you just, the act of doing it is what you get a kick out of. Luckily, I always enjoyed color pencil, but I stopped because I, when I was younger, I stopped in 1998. No, 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 sorry, in 2000. I stopped in 2000. I did this crazy piece once. But I, I didn't know how to, like, do color pencil without pressing too hard. And that's because I, in general, I always pressed too hard when I drew. And it wasn't until about, I started using a Cintiq around 2008 that I learned how to, like, draw without pressing hard. Um, because, you know, digitally how hard you press doesn't necessarily produce more coverage or any kind of difference in value. You can adjust the opacity just on, you know, digital settings alone. So I could start to train myself to draw by not pressing hard. Um, and then a couple years ago when I was doing Copics, I started using, I wanted to blend the Copics without using Copic Blender because I didn't like the way it looked. And so I just started using Color Pencil to do the blending because that's how Drew Struzan, you know, does his detail work on top of airbrush. I'm like, well, that's got to work about the same. And that is found I kept adding more and more color pencil to the point where, like, you know, I just don't enjoy doing the marker part. But these take longer, you know. And, you know, there's that part of you that goes, well, you know, I need the likes and the counts. But I'm like, you know, I'd, I'd rather, I, I just don't care about that anymore. I just, I'd rather just be making things that I enjoy. I enjoy this part. You know, it gets tedious with this fucking shit back here. These checkers. That's not much fun, you know. Uh, art is always a great side heart hustle, man. For a few reasons. One, it's a great way to make pocket change, you know. Um, and you get to just put things on paper. But two, you get to feel better about yourself having made something, you know. And in this day and age, you know, you don't always feel like you accomplished shit at work or you did anything important. And people tell you, ah, oh, it's awesome. And you feel better about yourself, you know. So. It's not so good for hanging out with people. <laughs> you know. 
You end up having less friends. Uh, in the real world. Either through lack of time or sometimes people get jealous when they see you producing things, you know. And they go, what's that for? What's that for? Oh, it's just a commission. Oh. Yeah, I got a friend. My, my buddy's brother does this thing. He works for Disney. Like, oh, all right, man. You know, thanks. Like, <laughs> it's not really what, you know. It's famous tattoo artist. He makes $10,000 tattoo. Like, all right, man. You know, it's not really. Yeah. Thanks for that info. It's a little tricky with reds, you know, because you have warm reds, like this one, which is uh, matter, which is like an orangey red. Then you have Alazon Crimson Hue, which is a cooler, more magenta red. Then you have Vermilions, which are warmer, pale oranges. Then you have the darker, more burnt sienna, which is this, the red violet, you know. And then it's a matter of like, then you got purples, and then you got and you got your final blacks and just like pushing these different warms and cool reds with hints of orange together you know to pop out Armando's being goofy I 
And I don't like doing a ton of burnishing on the character. Burnish is what you press hard to kind of smudge it together. I don't want to do that. I'll do a little bit of it in the shadow, like where the shadows hit. I'll take a real saturated color and do that there, but I don't do a ton of burnishing. One, because it's your knuckles, and two, I like the pencil texture. I'm not trying to get rid of it. Then I use this ballpoint for a more solid opaque black, the black color pencil for softer. And it's just trying to get one to sort of pop out the other. What do I pen I use? This is a Zebra Mechanical F301 Ballpoint. So you can get that kind of feathered edge. Works well with the color pencils.
Did I always have this drawing stuff? No. No. I mean, I did tend to draw characters more animated, you know, just because I always prefer animation. But, uh, I got paid to draw in a lot of different styles, you know, so a lot of this is just things, now I kind of like tend to draw things how I would like them to look. And since I started doing that, I've been getting less and less work. <laughs> but, oh well. I've been selling more and more commissions though, so, yeah. <laughs> For whatever that's worth. Uh, they do. They're really awesome. Nope. They found me from my DeviantArt. <laughs> from things I post on DeviantArt and my own designs and my game cave stuff. But there is this thing in development when you change formats where you lose people. And they say it's okay. They go, oh, look, you lost people. It must not be working. It's like, no, I'm, I'm trying to lose some people and change something. So, you know, whatever I'm doing now is to gain different kinds of clients, to gain different kinds of followers. It's not... So there's going to be a period, a rejection period, by publishers, by some fans, you know. But every time I've stuck with the things I really enjoy doing, it's worked out for me. So, over time, so... As long as, you know, the designs are there and they're being executed by people that understand, you know, what they're doing. They're not just being like, well, this is how I draw. That's my design. It's like, no, that's not it. You know, and I always feel it needs to also sort of meet, you know, the tone of the character. It's not like trying to be weird for the sake of being weird.
Plus, a lot of people are drawing from production models, you know? They're just kind of redrawing production art, and it just tends to kind of like blend together, you know? And you're seeing the same thing. Plus, you know, there's this thing too where people think they have to post certain art because it generates a certain amount of likes and engagement, you know? And then now they're trying to like trend board their art. <laughs> And, uh, I don't know, I've always just tried to be authentic, you know, like, look, you're getting me when I put something down on the paper, you know, like, it may not be your thing, that's fine, but you're not getting me trying to be whatever's trending on Instagram or Pinterest or Twitter that day, you know. You know, when a celebrity dies... I say things like, you know, rest in peace, really a big fan of their work, you know, breaks my heart, you know, I don't drop everything I'm doing and rush out to do fan art because it's going to get me some likes, shit like that, <laughs> you know. Or, hey, did you know, you know, this art style is trending, you should do this. Everything should be this. So, you just gotta roll with the stuff you enjoy looking at, you know. And look at my last for a year, my last. Sometimes I got people, they, they follow me for about a year or two, and then they go, well, you know, moving on. Like, alright, you know, I'll be here. Go have fun. It's all good. You know? I had to work on Fortnite shirts last week. I'm Fortnite out. Fortnited. Hey, what's up, Hector? How was it like? Yeah, it's not quite cross edging. But all the little pencil strokes build up and you get, you know, this like energy. Or the t shirts, like, it's just generic t shirt shit, man. They were trying to get the license and Magic was last week or it's this week in Vegas and so they had a whole presentation. I just had to do like eight, eight or ten different shirts. And they didn't get the license, so whatever I did will hand be handed probably over to whoever got the license. And then they'll probably just reinterpret my ideas. It happens all the time. It's the way it kind of works. It had nothing to do with my art or designs. It's just it's a business thing. Like, yeah. They went, they went with a bigger company. But be prepared for the Fortnite shirts coming to a Walmart near you. It's coming.
Dude, you know how much money they've made since October? For a free game? Over a billion dollars, man. It's not a fad, you know? No game lasts forever, but it's going to be around for a while, bro. You know? Minecraft's still kicking strong. It's been 10 years. We go, well, kind of tired of it. I'm like, it's been 10 years, like, and it's still going. Fortnite's going to be around. Will it be a licensing juggernaut? I don't know. You know? Angry Birds had its run with licensing. You know? So I don't know how much money there is in it. But the game proper? You know? It's for them to screw up, really. You know, whether uh, something can sell merchandise or not is, has nothing to do with the longevity of the product or the quality of it. There's tons of great things that exist that like the Daredevil TV show, I love it. Can't sell one Daredevil fucking TV show shirt. It just doesn't work. Um, but that's got nothing to do with the quality of the show. It's just... Merch is a whole other thing. Especially with all the bootleg shirts that can do weird random shit that you can't do in the licensed world, you know? Yeah, they're going to be playing it for quite a while. Which is great. That means they get the fuck off off my single player games, right? They can go get off other games. <laughs> I mean, there's other games, you know. There's other games. You know what would get me into, like, multiplayer... If there was like a multiplayer Mario 64 game, like a platformer, that would be dope. If it was really based around platforming and not like running around and murdering people, like Power Stone, you know? I mean, that was Power Stone was more versus people, but if it was more platforming, like goals and objectives, I could get into that. Who knows, all right? Like if they made Banjo Kazooie. No clue. I don't think they're the same audience. I think the audience for Fortnite are the people that grew up with Minecraft. And Warcraft, you know. I mean, the dances started in Warcraft, really. But it's not like... It's a shame that Jason game didn't take off. Movie licenses, man. It's tough. They have to constantly be renewed. Later I'm on it.
Is that just a pen? The black? Yeah, it's a ballpoint pen. Zebra. Zebra ballpoint pen. F301. Should be in the items box below. Well, the core shadows, this is not realistic rendering so much. This is sort of like Muppet rendering. Um, but your core shadow is just wherever your highlight is, right next to your highlight, will be the darkest point of your shadow. And that generally makes a three-dimensional, you know, like if I really wanted to make this super round, I would kind of do like a metallic, right, core shadow and then a highlight. But... But what I tend to do with stuff like this, which is, again, what I call more like Muppet rendering, where there's a lot of matte surfaces, is that I'm using black to push out. Because there's outlines, right, like a drawing. I'm using black to push out the brighter colors. And then I'm using color to, and then a matte black to kind of, you know, create the mid-tone. So... But like right here, if I really wanted to make that more three-dimensional, this line here, I could make that a real dark color. And to an extent, I'll do that with, with cross-hatching. Like, when I call cross-hatching, but like, uh, what do you call it? <sighs> with uh, tick marks. So, where you can come right around this edge with this blue here. But I'll do it with color so it doesn't make the image so dark. It makes it, it still makes it fun. So it's more of a concentration of color around where that core shadow would be. So see, and that's where I press hard a little bit more than I normally would. And around the very edges of dark areas, I'll take a real saturated color around the darkest part and just put a lot of saturation in that shadow so it has some vibrancy. It's again it it's something you really notice up close but you know, internet. There, see? Look how quickly that changed. Right? But I don't want to lose all these little tick marks, so I don't want to burnish too much. But then I'll very lightly come around here and continue curving these tick marks around that shape. So it's just a cone. 
and then I'm just kind of continuing to tick mark around it to kind of build that cone shape up very lightly. And I'll do that across the whole glove, you know, as I get as I get there. And then if I want to push it just a little bit more, just a little bit more, uh, we can get a purple. Right? Right here. And then just put just a little bit more. Of that saturated, it's a little bit more of a saturated purple to... This is a purple violet. It's just got more saturation. I'm not keeping track of the colors of the names. Um, so. so. A little goes a long way, you know. Then I can use my black color pencil to kind of come in here and Anytime you have the black color pencil, it's going to kind of dull it up a little bit. So I go very light because I might have to go and put a little bit of color around the edges of it to make it not so... The the, the dullness works great for more serious characters like, uh, like if, you know, if I was like a Wolverine or Batman or something.
Because this is what I was talking about, pushing back. With, you can push back with, uh, with shadows and kind of pop the lights forward versus just adding more reds, you know, adding more to try to create darker. Doesn't help as much. Everything takes a certain amount of skill. I mean, there is something to be said about inventing, you know. I draw from my imagination, you know. I don't use a ton of life reference, no. It doesn't make me better or worse than anybody. It's just, I tend to, the more life reference I use, the less it looks like I drew it, and the more it looks like life reference. <laughs> I like to see the artist's hand you know, so, when I work on production art, for like, you know, studios and stuff, it's, uh, it's less about standing out, right, so, gotta like, fit into the project. Well, I don't know, you know. The trick is to find people who appreciate it, right? Comes and goes. Then you never know. Five years, it could be like, we, we only like things that are stylized. And then, you know, it just... At this point, I, I just worry about what I'm working on and if I can, uh, I can achieve what I was trying to achieve with it, you know. Sometimes I go too far. I'm like, well, I overdid it that time. You know. All right, so.
Uh, yeah, a lot longer. A lot longer. You take longer than the watercolor. So the way for me to do more of them is to not do backgrounds, you know. But I don't like the Copics, so <laughs> you know what I mean. Like I don't, I don't enjoy it. So I, 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 I don't, I don't like it. What time is it? All right, so we got about another forty minutes. I'm just gonna try to work on his hand. I like the color pencil and I like the saucy. And I think they look completely different to one another. But when I do Copics and I put it on prints, people can't tell the difference between my Copic work and my Photoshop. So there's zero point to it.
Yeah. Uh, it's going to take a while, man. It's going to take on the better part of, I mean, four to six more weeks just to kind of get, you know, semi-normal. And he'll be doing physical therapy for like a year. Uh, he moves furniture and stuff. He fell on his arm at work. You know, basically. And it separated the bicep. And he didn't know, so he was walking around with it. Basically torn for, like, months. Yeah. Yeah, it's good times. Oh. He pulled a tater. I've been telling him for years he was going to injure himself at work eventually. Just watching what they do. He's like, no, man, I got this all worked out. I'm like, yeah, people don't plan on being injured at work, dumbass. Like, I'm just telling you. <laughs> Maybe you should start looking for a job that's not so physically demanding. You know? Well, I got this job working out now, and I'm like, yeah, now, but you're not going to want to look for a job when you need to. <laughs> and now he's going through that whole, I should have been looking for a job before I needed to. I'm like, yeah, well, you know. Oh, well, okay, my hindsight, you know. You live.
put a little bit more black in the knuckle stuff just to give him a little more tough guy. weird Well, it's all right, guys, because this is it. This is all I'm going to do for today. Um, 6.30. So, uh, Monday, we will continue this. And Monday, we will work on his other glove and his skin and nose. I should be able to get all those done. Yep. And then I'll tweak his glove here probably throughout the weekend. I kind of come away from it, look at it, kind of like noodle here and there, so. But, we're getting there. It's getting done. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. I will see you all very soon. Peace.